I'll turn one in, but we'll spend some time in class going through it, and I'll sort of coach you through it. Um, I still get the sense that folks are having trouble developing applications, and so I thought, well, if we kind of worked on one together, I wish I would have thought of this earlier, but if we kind of work on one together from beginning to end, that that may be um, something that, um, you know, would work out good. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a tic-tac-toe app, uh, app. And we have five sessions, including tonight. We have two this week, one the following week, the week of Thanksgiving, and then two the week after that. So I do want to give time for you to work on this independently, as well as your other projects, but I also want to spend some time in class talking about it. My aim is to first get it working so that it plays tic-tac-toe, all right, and then to work on refining it so that we can improve it, all right. What I want to do today is I want to first start thinking about the different components that we're going to have. Now, we may improve these. We may refactor it and create more classes, but let's start off just trying to get a basic tic-tac-toe game started. All right, what, cla what are we going to need to do this? What are some of the things that we're going to need to do this to create the tic-tac-toe application? I don't have anything to write on, so I'll do it um, using, a, um, using a big Word document. What is something we need? OK, we need a grid, all right? How is that grid going to be represented? In other words, where, where are we going to define that grid? In the layout, right. So, let's, yeah, I'll pick the most unreadable font. I like this one. This is actually, Garamond is actually, I have 15th, 16th, 17th century is a real old font. All right, I like it though. So, about our layout. It's going to contain a grid, three by three. All right. What kind of layout do you think would be best to represent this of all the t layouts that we've seen so far? Well, what are some of the layouts that we've seen so far? We've, we've, we've seen linear layouts where things are just lined up in a straight line vertically. We've seen horizontal layouts where things are in a line horizontal. We've seen relative layouts where um, things are positioned in relation to other things. And we saw another one that I think will be particularly well suitable for this, a table. All right, so our XML file is likely to have a table layout. Now let's concentrate first of all just on the tic-tac-toe board. We might put up, uh, we might have some rows in the table like to show who's win who won, you know, wins and wins and losses and all that. But let's just worry about the tic-tac-toe board to start. So that table is going to have three rows, right, and three columns. What is going to be in each column? What kind of object are we going to put inside each column? So you know we have a table layout. Table layout consists of rows. What's going to be in each row? Three of something, right? Three what? What do we want to put in there? Image views. Does that sound okay? We have one vote for image views. Does image view sound okay? Well, what else could we put there? You could put a text view and actually put the letter X and letter O, but that seems boring. All right. Um, so we're going to put an image view. The other thing we could do is we could do a custom view if we wanted to. And 
we're going to save that for possibly for uh, a subsequent pass because an image view should be enough um, for that. So, table is going to consist of three rows, three columns. Each column represents an image view. Okay? So, that's our basic layout of this. A table, three rows, three image rows, or, or three image views in each row. All right? Now, what should the behavior of those image views go? How is the user going to interact with the, with the uh, tic-tac-toe board? So how is the user, we have a grid, and yeah, we're going to have on-click events on each of these image views. Each of these image views are going to have set on-click events, on-click handlers or, or listeners rather. We'll start out doing it against themselves. All right, and as time goes, uh, I'm sorry, uh, against another human person. So you'll just, you'll put the tablet between two people and they'll use that instead of a sheet of paper. All right, we may go in and do this. Um, we may do it, um, you know, where the computer plays against you. Um, that might be a later pass or where you have the option of two people or um, pass it. Uh, or, or have the computer do it. But for now, we'll do it just between two people, and the assumption is you have two people sitting there touching the board at the same time. What does the on-click event going to do? All right. Let's talk about the behavior of the on-click event. All right, the statement is, is do we have, we need two on-click events. Does everyone agree with that? First of all, can, and can we assign two different on-click listeners to a view? I don't think, I don't think we can. So what, what are we going to do with the on-click listener? Okay, so what do we need, what does the game, that brings up a good, good question, what does the game need to know? What is the responsibility of the game? One responsibility of the game is to know whose turn. Is either X's or O's. And we can make a, at least to start, we can make a simple convention that X starts, and then, then it's O's turn. So, what's the on-click event going to do then? When we click on one of the image views, when we click on one, I'll call them cells for lack of a better word. When we click on one of the cells, what is it going to do? Go check whose turn it is. What else is it going to do? Okay, it will pick an image. It will then set the image to appropriate image X or O, which, by the way, is another thing we need, right? We need an X image and an O image. All right. I'm not completely satisfied with the on-click event, though. We're missing something. Should I be able to change a selection that you've made? So if it's my turn, can I click and change your X to an O? I answer is I hope not. All right, so when you click on something, it's going to check who's, it's going to first of all see if cell has previously been selected. All 
If so, it's going to do nothing. All right? If so, it's going to do nothing. All right? If not, Then it's going to check to see whose turn it is. It's going to set the image to the appropriate, X or O. And it's going to do one more thing. Do one more thing. Or actually, two more things. Switch the turn to the other player. Okay. And what else? One other thing. It's going to yeah, it's going to evaluate if anyone has won. All right. Now we'll worry about like after a game is over, resetting it and start another one. Let's just get through one game first. All right. And, and then we'll worry about like resetting or tallying up who won how many games and so on. All right. So to repeat, we're going to have a layout, which is a three by three grid, a table, three rows and three columns. Each column consists of an image view. Each image view has an on-click event associated with it that does this. See if cell has previously been selected. If so, then it doesn't do anything. I guess you could either pop up an error message or you could just disregard it and not do anything. If the cell has not been previously selected, check whose turn it is. Set the appropriate image to X or O. Change whose turn it is. And evaluate if anyone has won or not. Okay? Attributes on the game itself is going to be whose turn it is. Alright? We just want to know whose turn it is. Now, the game's also going to need a function to evaluate. So likely this on click event is going to evaluate, it's going to call a function on the game that says Hey, have they won or have they lost? We're going to need an image for an X and an image for an O. How many on-click listeners are we going to have? There's, there's probably two answers that I would think are reasonable. All right. The one answer is that there will be nine of them. One for each cell. The second answer is that there will be one on-click listener that we're going to apply to all nine cells. Which do you think we're going to do? We're going to do the latter. We're going to have one on-click listener that we're going to apply to nine of these cells. Because what's different for each of these cells? Each of these cells in tic-tac-toe is going to be the same. All right? We're going to see if the cell has been previously selected. If so, do nothing. If it's not been selected, check whose turn it is, set the image to the appropriate image, switch turns, and evaluate to see who's won. I started this application today, and I got so far in it. Doesn't completely work, but it works enough to demonstrate what I'm sort of after for this first pass. What I'm sort of after for this first pass is this. page or the, the application when it starts
when it starts, it starts with a three by three grid of question marks. Now that's how I chose to represent that the cell has not been chosen yet. If you have another way of doing it, if you just want to do it with an empty cell, that's fine. All right. X starts. So when you click on one of the cells, it changes from an O to, or from a, a question mark to an X because it's X's turn. Now, when you click on the next one, it knows that it's O's turn, so it will make that an O. I'm popping up a little toast message because that's a nifty little debugging tool. Plus, it can be used to give messages to the user as well. If it's not like some drastic earth-shattering message, if you just want to inform them, hey, your download finished or something like that, the toast message is a nice little way to do it in a very unobtrusive way. In other words, it doesn't like, you know, require any action of the user. It shows it to them, then it disappears. All right. It's saying win or no one. So no one has won yet. And then finally it says win or O because the O's have won, because the O's have a line up there. This is where I want to get in the first phase. Now I'm not completely done. I only check for the winning condition of the top row being selected. All right. So I still have yet to... Um, develop uh, the other uh, win scenarios. Okay? So what I'd like you to do is, keeping these things in mind, I'd like you to start out doing this and developing this app. Now, Keep in mind that you're welcome to approach this one at a time, you know, one piece at a time. That is, maybe make the layout that only has one image in it and work on changing that from an X to an O or from a blank to an X or to a, from a blank to an O. Or you're welcome to develop the whole layout first or whatever. So you're welcome to take sort of any approach you want to on doing this. But what I'd like you to do is Within the next class or two, get to, like, this point, all right, to where you can click on these things, you can change them. You can change something that hasn't been, um, or that's already been selected, and it evaluates after it's done, and it tells you if there's a winner or not. We'll worry about the resets and all that stuff later. Let's just worry about getting one thing down. All right? Now, this, this screen? Yeah. So, what I'm going to do now is we'll, we'll start, stop recording. Um, um, I'll give you my laptop so you can start on this. When you're done, be sure to like email it to yourself or something. All right? But so you have something to work on, you can work on the laptop. And let's see how far we can get today in, in starting our tic-tac-toe. Um, as we go forward, again, we'll add some features to it. And again, what's nice about this is I think we can get something finished pretty quickly. And then we can spend our time enhancing it however um, we think is appropriate. All right.
I don't want this to be like another lab, by the way. I want to, well, I don't want to look over your shoulder because no one likes that, really. All right. I do want to sort of have a sense of where you are throughout the lab and definitely by the time we're done with the day so that we know, so I know what we need to do in the following day and so I can give you some suggestions. So talk between each other and talk with me to sort of um, get it straight what it is you need to do. All right.